with all his possessions. And when he came to Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. During the night, God spoke to him in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he called. Here I am, Jacob replied. I am God, the God of your father, the voice said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make your family into a great nation. I will go with you down to Egypt, and I will bring you back again. But you will die in Egypt with Joseph attending to you. So Jacob left Beersheba, and his sons took him to Egypt. They carried him and their little ones and their wives and the wagons Pharaoh had provided for them. They also took all their livestock and all the personal belongings they had acquired in the land of Canaan. So Jacob and his entire family went to Egypt, sons and grandsons, daughters and granddaughters, all his descendants. These are the names of the descendants of Israel, the sons of Jacob, who went to Egypt. Reuben was Jacob's oldest son. The sons of Reuben were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul. Shaul's mother was a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, Shelah, Piruz, and Zerah, though Ur and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Piruz were Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun were Sirid, Elon, and Jalil. These were the sons of Leah and Jacob who were born in Paden Aram in addition to their daughter Dinah. The number of Jacob's descendants, male and female, through Leah, was thirty-three. The sons of Gad were Zephon, Haggai, Shunai, Esbon, Eri, Eridai, and Arlai. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Beriah. Their sister was Sira. Beriah's sons were Heber and Melchiel. These were the sons of Zilpah, the servant given to Leah by her father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Zilpah was sixteen. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph's sons, born in the land of Egypt, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Their mother was Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, the priest of An. Benjamin's sons were Bela, Bikur, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Muppim, Huppim, and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel and Jacob. The number of Jacob's descendants through Rachel was fourteen. The son of Dan was Husham. The sons of Naphtali were Jazil, Guni, Jezer, and Shillam. These were the sons of Bilhah, the servant given to Rachel by her father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Bilhah was seven. The total number of Jacob's direct descendants who went with him to Egypt, not counting his sons' wives, was sixty-six. In addition, Joseph had two sons who were born in Egypt. So altogether, there were seventy members of Jacob's family in the land of Egypt. Jacob's family arrives in Goshen. As they neared their destination, Jacob sent Judah ahead to meet Joseph and get directions to the region of Goshen. And when they finally arrived there, Joseph prepared his chariot and traveled to Goshen to meet his father Jacob. When Joseph arrived, he embraced his father and wept, holding him for a long time. Finally, Jacob said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen your face again and know you are still alive. And Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's entire family, "I will go to Pharaoh and tell him, 'My brothers and my father's entire family have come to me from the land of Canaan. These men are shepherds and they raise livestock. They have brought with them their flocks and herds and everything they own." Then he said, "When Pharaoh calls for you and asks you about your occupation, you must tell him, 'We, your servants, have raised livestock all our lives as our ancestors have always done.'" When you tell him this, he will let you live here in the region of Goshen, for the Egyptians despise shepherds. Chapter forty-seven. Jacob blesses Pharaoh. Then Joseph went to see Pharaoh and told him, "My father and my brothers have arrived from the land of Canaan. They have come with all their flocks and herds and possessions, and they are now in the region of Goshen." 
Joseph took five of his brothers with him and presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? They replied, We, your servants, are shepherds, just like our ancestors. We have come to live here in Egypt for a while, for there is no pasture for our flocks in Canaan. The famine is very severe there, so please we request permission to live in the region of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your father and brothers have joined you here, choose any place in the entire land of Egypt for them to live. Give them the best land of Egypt, let them live in the region of Goshen, and if any of them have special skills, put them in charge of my livestock too. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. How old are you? Pharaoh asked him. Jacob replied, I have traveled this earth for one hundred and thirty hard years, but my life has been short compared to the lives of my ancestors. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh again before leaving his court. So Joseph assigned the best land of Egypt, the region of Ramesses, to his father and his brothers, and he settled them there just as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided food for his father and his brothers in amounts appropriate to the number of their dependents, including the smallest children. Joseph's Leadership in the Famine Meanwhile, the famine became so severe that all the food was used up and people were starving throughout the lands of Egypt and Canaan. By selling grain to the people, Joseph eventually collected all the money in Egypt and Canaan, and he put the money in Pharaoh's treasury. When the people of Egypt and Canaan ran out of money, all the Egyptians came to Joseph. Our money is gone, they cried, but please give us food or we will die before your very eyes. Joseph replied, Since your money is gone, bring me your livestock. I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. So they brought their livestock to Joseph in exchange for food, in exchange for their horses, flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and donkeys. Joseph provided them with food for another year. But that year ended, and the next year they came again and said, We cannot hide the truth from you, my lord. Our money is gone, and all our livestock and cattle are yours. We have nothing left to give but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your very eyes? Buy us and our land in exchange for food. We offer our land and ourselves as slaves for Pharaoh. Just give us grain so we may live and not die. And so the land does not become empty and desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. All the Egyptians sold him their fields because the famine was so severe, and soon all the land belonged to Pharaoh. As for the people, he made them all slaves, from one end of Egypt to the other. The only land he did not buy was the land belonging to the priests. They received an allotment of food directly from Pharaoh, so they didn't need to sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Look, today I have bought you and your land for Pharaoh. I will provide you with seed so you can plant the fields. Then, when you harvest it, one-fifth of your crop will belong to Pharaoh. You may keep the remaining four-fifths as seed for your fields and as food for you, your households, and your little ones. You have saved our lives, they exclaimed. May it please you, my lord, to let us be Pharaoh's servants. Joseph then issued a decree, still in effect in the land of Egypt, that Pharaoh should receive one-fifth of all the crops grown on his land. Only the land belonging to the priests was not given to Pharaoh. Meanwhile, the people of Israel settled in the region of Goshen in Egypt. There they acquired property, and they were fruitful, and their population grew rapidly. Jacob lived for seventeen years after his arrival in Egypt, so he lived one hundred and forty-seven years in all. As the time of his death drew near, Jacob called for his son Joseph and said to him, Please do me this favor. Put your hand under my thigh and swear that you will treat me with unfailing love by honoring this last request. Do not bury me in Egypt. When I die, Please take my body out of Egypt and bury me with my ancestors. So Joseph promised, I will do as you ask. Swear that you will do it, Jacob insisted. So Joseph gave his oath, and Jacob bowed humbly at the head of his bed. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman who lived there came to him, pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. 
Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She is bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord, but even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, Your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. Jesus heals many people. Jesus returned to the Sea of Galilee and climbed a hill and sat down. A vast crowd brought to him people who were lame, blind, crippled, those who couldn't speak, and many others. They laid them before Jesus, and he healed them all. The crowd was amazed. Those who hadn't been able to speak were talking, the crippled were made well, the lame were walking, and the blind could see again. And they praised the God of Israel. Jesus feeds four thousand. Then Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been here with me for three days, and they have nothing left to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry, or they will faint along the way. The disciples replied, Where would we get enough food here in the wilderness for such a huge crowd? Jesus asked, How much bread do you have? They replied, Seven loaves and a few small fish. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to the disciples who distributed the food to the crowd. They all ate as much as they wanted. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven large baskets of leftover food. There were 4,000 men who were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Then Jesus sent the people home, and he got into a boat and crossed over to the region of Magadan. Chapter 48 Jacob Blesses Manasseh and Ephraim One day not long after this, word came to Joseph, Your father is failing rapidly. So Joseph went to visit his father, and he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. When Joseph arrived, Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has come to see you. So Jacob gathered his strength and sat up in his bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. He said to me, I will make you fruitful, and I will multiply your descendants. I will make you a multitude of nations." and I will give this land of Canaan to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. Now I am claiming as my own sons these two boys of yours, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born here in the land of Egypt before I arrived. They will be my sons, just as Reuben and Simeon are. But any children born to you in the future will be your own, and they will inherit land within the territories of their brothers, Ephraim and Manasseh. Long ago, as I was returning from Paden Aram, Rachel died in the land of Canaan. We were still on the way some distance from Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem, so with great sorrow I buried her there beside the road to Ephrath. Then Jacob looked over at the two boys. Are these your sons? he asked. Yes, Joseph told him. These are the sons God has given me here in Egypt. And Jacob said, Bring them closer to me so I can bless them. Jacob was half blind because of his age and could hardly see. So Joseph brought the boys close to him, and Jacob kissed and embraced them. Then Jacob said to Joseph, I never thought I would see your face again, but now God has let me see your children too. Joseph moved the boys who were at their grandfather's knees, and he bowed with his face to the ground. Then he positioned the boys in front of Jacob, with his right hand he directed Ephraim toward Jacob's left hand, and with his left hand he put Manasseh at Jacob's right hand. But Jacob crossed his arms as he reached out to lay his hands on the boys' heads. He put his right hand on the head of Ephraim, though he was the younger boy, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, though he was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, 
May the God before whom my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this very day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May they preserve my name and the names of Abraham and Isaac, and may their descendants multiply greatly throughout the earth. But Joseph was upset when he saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted it to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. No, my father, he said, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused. I know, my son, I know, he replied. Manasseh will also become a great people, but his younger brother will become even greater, and his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So Jacob blessed the boys that day with this blessing. The people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, May God make you as prosperous as Ephraim and Manasseh. In this way, Jacob put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Jacob said to Joseph, Look, I am about to die, but God will be with you, and will take you back to Canaan, the land of your ancestors. And beyond what I have given your brothers, I am giving you an extra portion of the land that I took from the Amorites with my sword and bow.